If, if, I, if someone's unmuted, I'll, I'll mute you. All right, Rabbi, it's your, All your right. show. Um, I don't have to tell you, this is a very, very strange feeling, this entire experience. Um, everything seems to be different. This Shabbos is my grandson Kobe's bar mitzvah. There's no bar mitzvah, but he's going to deliver his speech on the Parsha preview tomorrow. It's a small example of how every family is affected in some way by the change that's been brought about by this coronavirus. But our concern for right now is in terms of preparations for Pesach. What do we do? What do we do differently? What is permitted and what is not? Are some of the things that I just want to briefly go over with you and um, let me run through them and then we'll put everybody on speaker that they can raise whatever questions they want. Um, also, if anybody wants, I'm looking at the chat bar on the bottom of your screen. If you're on a laptop, there's, a, there's a, an icon where it says chat. You can click on that and add a question on the side and I'll read it to the rabbi. All right, so here we go. Let's uh, start with the evening before Pesach. Bidikas chametz, we go searching for the chametz. It's very important this year that you leave out a small number of crumbs or little pieces of bread, small. Why? We generally put out 10 pieces because we're going to have to dispose of our chametz on the day before Pesach, on Erev Pesach, and we're not gonna be able to go to any communal burning or even the burning of the chametz that we've had in the Beth Tefillah parking lot because we don't want to attract crowds together. So each of us is going to have to burn our own chametz. So we want to make sure not to have too much chametz. And what you do is on Erev Pesach, you either can burn it in your barbecue grill or you can flush it down the toilet. And both are acceptable. Or you get it into your garbage can and you push your garbage can out to the curb and you recite the appropriate blessings. But there is no communal get-together for the burning of the chametz. On the day before rabbi, Pesach, uh, yes. Um, if you wanna see the rabbi in a, bigger mo in a bigger view, on the top of your screen, there's speaker view instead of gallery, and then you can see a bigger picture of the rabbi as he speaks. On Erev Pesach, the firstborn are supposed to fast because the firstborn are grateful that they weren't killed when the firstborn of the Egyptians were killed. But generally speaking, in our day and age, few actually fast. What they do is come to a seum, a completion of a tractate of the Talmud. And when we complete that tractate, we recite a special Kaddish. And then we have a su'udat mitzvah, a joyous meal, to celebrate the completion of that tractate. And in, because of that, the firstborn who are present can eat and then do not have to fast the rest of the day. This year, we are not going to be able to bring everybody together, but we will do it live online by Zoom. And we chose who should have to spend their time finishing a tractate of the Talmud. I couldn't do it because I needed to take a nap. Rabbi Posner couldn't do it because he has kids to take care of. Rabbi Yogev couldn't do it because he did he's, last myst year. <laughs> he's mystically up in the clouds. That's why we love Rabbi Wecker. Rabbi Wecker is busy finishing a tractate of the Talmud and come Erev Pesach, you'll receive information 
and you'll be able to participate in the CM if you are a firstborn. It'll be at 8 a.m. on this channel. So you just log in the same way you logged in today at 8 a.m. If you eat a meal at your house, uh, you fulfill the mitzvah, uh, if you, as long as you learn with us. Now, a, a very um, interesting question that has come up has to do with matzah. The matzah that we're going to use at the Pesach Seder. Traditionally, we use shmura matzah. That's handmade matzah where the wheat has been watched from the moment that it was cut out in the fields. That is considered the ideal for the Pesach Seder. Some would say for all of Pesach. And that's what was used down through the ages. I remember when I took a Nile cruise, maybe 10, 15 years ago, you go down the Nile, they're still making bread, they're still making matzah, just the way we eat it at the Pesach Seder. In the middle of the 1800s, somebody discovered that a machine can make matzah. That created one of the greatest controversies in Jewish history, with some people, some rabbis allowing for the use of machine matzahs, and some rabbis absolutely prohibiting it. In our day and age, it's le much less of an issue. First of all, a case can be made that the matzah that is made by machine has less of a chance of becoming chametz than that which is made by hand. And so today we have shmura matzah available by hand, shmura matzah available by machine, and then regular matzah. There are some who say that the shmura matzah made by the machine is better than the shmura matzah made by hand. Be that as it may, the ideal is to use shmura matzah at the Pesach Seder. If not shmura matzah, then machine shmura matzah. This is available at Seven Mile. But this year, if we're not using machine um, shmura or regular shmura, you can use regular matzah especially if it's under the supervision of the Orthodox Union. Because one of the aspects of the matzah that we use on Pesach is it has to be made lishma, that it has to be made for the sake of the mitzvah of Pesach. Well, how do you do that with the machine? <laughs> you make sure that a Jew presses the button and starts the machine. All of the matzah that's under the supervision of the Orthodox Union is made in that manner. And this year, you certainly can use that for the Pesach Seder. The other foods that you can use this year, which you haven't used in the past, I'm not too crazy about the whole idea. It, it, you all know me. When it comes to Pesach, I'm a real traditionalist. There's no stretching the envelope. I was raised that way, and I've kept to it. I, I don't see the need to make much changes in terms of foods this year from last year, because most food is readily available, and you can have it delivered. But I, I don't know if it's not too late, by Market Maven, by Seven Mile. We've been getting all of the food that we need for Pesach. But there is a chart that was sent out by the London rabbis, which we've included in our touch points, which gives some leniencies in other foods. And if necessary, I would tell you to take them up on it. Some of those that stick out, well, you can use all coffee, pure butter, even without a hashgacha. Eggs every year doesn't need a hashgacha. Let's see some other things. Salmon in a can, if it's in plain uh, water or brine, can be used for Pesach. The same thing with tuna. But most everything else, I would stick to what we've been doing in the past. 
unless there's an absolute need to fill in. The same has to be said in terms of the Pesach Seder itself. There's a lot of talk about Zoom and connecting the whole family uh, virtually, so on and so forth. And some rabbis say yes, and some rabbis say no. And what happens is when a rabbi says yes, that's only for the day he said it, because by the night he's been pressured enough to change his mind and say no. But the reality is, if we have a parent or someone who is alone at home for the Pesach Seder, and who is really going to get depressed because of it, then we should link them in. The better way of doing it is by phone rather than by the computer. By the computer, somebody's going to end up fooling around with it, needing to make some adjustment. On the phone, if you call in before Yontif, you can just keep that going. But all, that's all of Yontif. Just leave it open. It will eventually click off. Okay. Or the left elbow. You have to all learn the left elbow move. If you, Schwartz, Charles, you have other ways of turning it off. I'm sure we, we'll get to you. You're on mute. Your wife is so happy that you are on mute, Mark. You have no idea. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, no, you can turn your computer on and it'll last for a whole bunch of hours before the battery dies. In the meantime, you could have your Seder. Yeah, know. but won't, won't the... Um, I, the problem this, with Zoom is I think Zoom... I think Zoom a, doesn't last forever. And Z it's worse than that. I think that. I think that if you have a free Zoom account, it times out after 40 minutes or an hour or something anyway. Yeah. So it won't even work. And, the, and your screen is going to go dark. If it has to be done, I would say the phone is the better way of doing it. Um, if you find yourself, as Sherry and I are going to find ourselves, just the two of us at the Pesach Seder, you might find other things to discuss that you haven't at previous Sedarim where you had a large crowd. Like this year, not using the regular Haggadah that we use, we are using the Trump Haggadah, which uh, I'm sure will make for some fascinating reading. And you might consider a different Haggadah as well for this year. Let's see, do we have any questions? Let's unmute you. Okay. All right, everyone's unmuted. Anybody have a question? Bobby? Bobby K. <laughs> right. Absolutely. I Bobby, am I'm no. available. I can go to your house and I knock on the door. I can be Eliyahu for you. <laughs> L listen, Bobby, even though we're doing things differently this year, no, you can't use. Oops, somebody what? muted You're you. Muted. <laughs> Rabbi, please repeat that again. I'm just saying this for Bobby. Even though we're doing things a little bit differently this year, no, Bobby, you cannot use bagels at the Seder. <laughs> Have no fear. Okay. All right, I'm unmuting everybody again. All right, we're unmuted. Let's hear what you got on your mind. Repeat <laughs> this again. Mm -hmm. Who has, anybody have... Um... A question or anything the rabbi said or just something you're thinking about with regards to Passover that you want to share with the rabbi? <laughs> oh, another question that has come up. We usually take a haircut before Pesach because then we get into the period of the Omer One when second. we can't cut our hair. We'll be able to cut our hair Pesach until Rosh Chodesh and let's hope that by then we won't have any problem. Questions? Over here. Deborah. Robert, yes. you look comfortable. I'm quite comfortable. And Thank you got you. your matzahs right next to you there? 
<laughs> you, you know Just that, for one day. You should know the tradition <laughs> is that beginning today, we don't eat matzah. <laughs> and from the first of the month of Pesach, we don't eat any matzah, so that when Pesach comes, it should be fresh in our mouths. We actually don't do it for a month in advance. Some people do it a month in advance. Deborah? Hello. No, I'm talking to your dog. Does she have a question? Yeah, Missy wanted to say hi. <laughs> Can, can you hear me this morning? Yeah. I'm just yes, gonna, go well, ahead. Hold one moment. Let me just so, about selling hummets? One moment. Try to do that online? You can do it online. You can make me your agent online, and I will then sell everyone's hummet, as we do every year. So, normally I add in like my place of business, but I haven't been there for a long time. Should I still do that just because I keep like Coffee yeah. cups and there's no reason not to absolutely include that. <laughs> yes. Is Any question? Is selling the hummus going to be a new fundraiser? I, this year, I don't know if we're going to have any fundraisers. People have really been hit financially. Absolutely. Now, this is, it, it, we don't know what we're going to do about Spotlight. That's why we haven't taken down our sign yet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but it might, Spotlight might take place in your living room. Uh, we have a question here. One second. Uh, we, have, we have a question here in the, in the chat uh, section. Who will ask the four questions at your Seder? Hmm. Do you know that this is even discussed in the Talmud? If you are by yourself, you ask the questions. And our Seder, I'm going to ask the question because Sherry always has all the answers. <laughs> Rabbi, does this cut into your vacation time? <laughs> no. no. Look at the top row. I'm doing. Listen, the truth of the matter is, I'm not allowed to say this, but I love this. This is, this is like early retirement. I mean, what did I do to deserve this? God. You're you're on a coronation. Yeah, I'm going to, you got it, man. Oh my God. I've got and, and Renee a, and Renee is running Corona Academy. I have books and articles that I always pile up for the summer. Read when I'm at the beach. I'm reading them now. There. And I'm learning a lot. Anything else? Any questions? Anything, anything else connected to cooking, food, um, how to celebrate the Seder? I'm, go I'm making a video running through the Seder. I've made a video of different Haggadahs that you use. I'm going to do a Shabbos Haggadah Drasha, a different one than I had planned doing. And I think the night before Pesach, we're going to live stream something to the entire congregation. And the other rabbis are doing things accordingly. We've been very, very busy trying to reach out to as many people as we possibly can. Holly Benick, through her family life committee, have called close to a thousand people yeah. to stay in touch with them, which is really fantastic. Mm -hmm. Anything else? This was great, Rabbi. Thank you. Listen, thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. I'm telling you. Thank you, Rabbi.